Woman refused to sell house to country. When they enter, her sad reason becomes clear. The first light of dawn casts a soft shadow over the remnants of an old neighborhood where Mi Lin, a solitary figure, moves through her garden with a grace that belies the cacophony of construction nearby. Her hands, weathered from years of tending to the earth, work methodically, as if each plant and flower were a bulwark against the tide of progress that threatens to wash her away. Mi Lin's neighbors, once a vibrant tapestry of community life, have vanished one by one, leaving her the last guardian of memories in a town surrendered to silence and dust. To the officials orchestrating the city's relentless expansion, she's a symbol of futile resistance. Her tenacity misconstrued as folly. They fail to see the intricate weave of her resolve, spun from threads of a narrative far richer than the superficial labels assigned to her. Into this landscape of fading echoes steps Zhuang Wei, his gaze fixed on the steadfast woman amidst the ruins. In the keen eye of a storyteller, he discerns a deeper truth in the set of her jaw and the firmness of her stance. There's a story here. He realizes one that could stir the hearts of an entire nation. He crosses the threshold, the aged wood of the gate groaning a welcome, and finds himself in the presence of defiance personified. Mi Lin, surrounded by a defiant spray of color from her flowers, appears untouched by the disorder that encroaches upon her sanctuary. Her focus on the garden is unbroken, each movement a silent protest. Their conversation begins as a dance of shadows. Zhang Wei, leading with questions that chase the essence of her resistance, only to be met with responses that flutter away like leaves in the wind. Yet he perceives the pain and pride that underpin her words, the love for the home that has cradled her soul through seasons of joy and sorrow. He presses on, gently, respectfully, and, with each query, the walls she has built around her history begin to crumble. Mi Lin's life unfolds before him. Each anecdote, a brick in the foundation of her home, each memory, a beam supporting the weight of her world. Zhang Wei listens, spellbound, as the garden around them transforms into a living testament to her journey. Here, amidst the greenery that defies the gray concrete of development, Mi Lin's tale finds its voice. It's a story not of a woman left behind by time, but of one who stands as the embodiment of an era that refuses to be forgotten. Zhang Wei realizes that her spirit, much like the garden she nurtures, is a resilient bloom that refuses to wilt under the shadow of the coming machines. In the quiet defiance of Mi Lin's existence, Zhang Wei finds the heartbeat of a narrative that speaks to the soul of a country caught between the reverence for its past and the march towards its future. He knows that the story he will tell is not one of resistance, but of reverence, a homage to the lives that have given the city its pulse, now echoed in the steadfast beat of Mi Lin's unyielding heart. The threshold of Mi Lin's home feels like the border between two worlds, the chaotic rush of modernization on one side, and on the other, a realm where time moves to the rhythm of memory. Zhang Wei steps over this divide and is immediately enveloped in the atmosphere of a past preserved. The air is thick with the scent of aged wood and the faint trace of incense that seems to seep from every wall. Mi Lin guides him through the rooms, her voice a soft melody accompanying the silent symphony of the house. Each object she touches comes alive with stories, as if her fingertips release the spirits of days gone by. A vase is not just a vessel, but a keeper of whispers from hushed conversations over tea. The cracks in the walls are not signs of neglect, but natural wrinkles that come with the grace of old age, each one marking the passage of seasons and the weight of history. In the stillness, Mi Lin speaks of her youth, a time when her country churned with the fervor of the Cultural Revolution. Her eyes light up as she recalls meeting Liang, a man whose soul was a kaleidoscope of colors. His talent for seeing the world through an artist's eye turned their home into a masterpiece. The walls, once bare, had blossomed under his brushes into murals of their life, vibrant with the hues of their love and shared dreams. 
But joy is often a prelude to sorrow in times of turmoil. Zhang Wei listens, heart heavy, as Mi Lin recounts the dark period when Liang's art, once celebrated, became a siren call for persecution. The government, which had fueled the fire of the revolution, now turned its flames upon them, and Liang was consumed. In the wake of tragedy, the house became a sanctuary for Mi Lin, a vessel to safeguard the essence of the man she loved. She caresses a painted banister, her touch tender as she traces the strokes of Liang's brush, now silent. The laughter of their children, once resonant within these rooms, has faded into a haunting quiet, leaving Mi Lin a solitary keeper of the fortress of her legacy. Zhang Wei watches as Mi Lin pauses before a particular wall, a mural depicting a garden in bloom, their garden, a confluence of the real and the imagined. It's clear that for Mi Lin, this house is more than a structure. It's the embodiment of Liang, of their love, a testament to a time when beauty was cultivated and cherished. As Mi Lin's narrative unfolds, the journalist understands the gravity of her connection to this place. It's a bastion against forgetting, a statement that the past can not merely be bulldozed over by the present. He realizes that Mi Lin clings to the house not out of resistance to change, but out of loyalty to the past and to Liang, whose spirit is interwoven with every element of this timeless haven. Zhang Wei knows that Mi Lin's tale is not one of a house, but of a life so richly lived that letting go would mean erasing the very essence of what once was. The evening has drawn in, and the room is bathed in the tender hues of the oil lamp's light, flickering gently as if it too is listening to the sacred confessions of Mi Lin. Shadows dance across her features, giving her a timeless quality as she speaks to Zhang Wei, her voice barely above a whisper, imbued with the reverence of a deeply personal truth. In the subdued light, Mi Lin's hands unfold a tapestry of memories, each stroke of Liang's brush on the hidden paintings a testament to their shared existence. With each revelation, the room seems to contract, the walls drawing closer, as if to embrace the tales of love and longing that the couple had woven into the very fabric of their home. Liang, who had left the mortal world in the clutch of winter's cruel grasp, had left behind more than just memories for Mi Lin. It's a concealed nook in the attic, a space that evaded the march of time. Mi Lin had uncovered a trove of letters and sketches. Every piece was a shard of Liang's soul, each line on the paper a silent echo of his voice, each letter a whisper from the past, urging her to find solace in the midst of solitude. These secret missives revealed Liang's profound desire for Mi Lin to not just inhabit the house, but to let joy bloom in the hollowness of his absence. It was his final wish, his last breath immortalized in ink and paper, asking her to let their home be a vessel of perpetual love, to let the walls sing with the stories of their time together. Zhang Wei, witnessing the unveiling of such intimacy, feels a profound shift within himself. The narrative he had come to capture morphs before him into something sacred, a saga not of stone and timber, but of human connection and resilience. He sees now the depth of Mi Lin's resolve. It's not the stubbornness of the aged, but the strength of a heart that refuses to relinquish its bond. The house, in its silent majesty, ceases to be a mere physical entity. It rises in Zhang Wei's eyes to become a shrine to Liang's spirit and their undying love. Each room is an altar to a different chapter of their life, each painting a window to a moment forever captured in time. As Mi Lin delicately handles the artifacts of Liang's last communications, there is a palpable present in the room as though Liang himself stands beside them, his spirit enfolded in the warm glow of the lamp. The air is thick with the essence of the love they shared, a love that defies the very concept of end. Zhang Wei, once an outsider looking in, now understands that the story he is part of is far greater than the sum of its parts. The house with its lingering scents, creaking floors, and the silent testimony of its walls stand not as a relic to be discarded in the name of progress, but a living monument to the eternal dance of life and love, a dance that Mi Lin continues in honor of the man whose essence it still protects. 
As Mi Lin's narrative weaves through the fabric of China, it tugs at the heartstrings of a nation, grappling with its rapid transformation. Zhang Wei, once merely an observer, becomes a voice for the story that has stirred the country's soul. His words, etched into the articles that traverse cities and villages, form a poignant portrait of Mi Lin's steadfast bond with her home. The buzz of conversation around Mi Lin's defiance against the demolition grows louder, resonating in tea houses, on social media, and in the bustling market squares. It's a dialogue that questions the price of progress and the place of tradition in a country racing towards the future. As bulldozers stand ready to erase her legacy, Mi Lin is presented with a proposal that is rich in compensation but poor in understanding. Yet she stands as resolute as the ancient trees guarding her home, her resolve unshaken by the lure of wealth. It's not a house she's fighting for, but a sanctuary of memories, a canvas of her life with Lang. In the eleventh hour, with the shadow of destruction looming, Zhang Wei orchestrates an encounter that could chart a new destiny for the old home. In a room where the air is thick with anticipation, Mi Lin presents a vision, a vision where her home emerges as a bastion of heritage, a museum that echoes the art and soul of an era personified by Liang's creations. Silence follows her proposition, as if the very foundations of the room are contemplating the weight of her words. Then, in a decision as unexpected as a bloom in the desert, the officials acquiesce. The narrative of a woman's love and loyalty sways the scales, tipping the balance towards preservation. The nation watches as Mi Lin's home is reborn, not as a relic of resistance, but as a vessel of cultural memory. The victory is more than personal. It's a mosaic of collective memory and identity. Mi Lin's home stands proud amid the steel and glass of the new age, a testament to the harmony that can exist between the reverence for history and the march of innovation. Her story, now etched into the annals of the country's rich tapestry, serves as a lasting reminder that within the veins of progress runs the enduring stories of the people it impacts. In this new chapter of its existence, the house becomes a beacon of hope, a proof that even amidst the relentless drumbeat of progress, the heartbeats of the past can still find a place to resonate.